it's interesting to see I, i've you know um uh this interview right now with, with you and then i'm just thinking of some other subjects i've covered on here where it's like there's there's just there's like this these really intelligent people and very compassionate people who are doing this kind of almost invisible work for a while like they're doing something that's really necessary but it just hasn't been picked up by like really big um, uh, you know journalistic organizations or you know uh, media organizations yet and uh, and then seeing it get picked up and like recognizing like oh you know this pandemic obviously is going to affect prisoners the the hardest just based on the fact that they're in these enclosed spaces for however long, you know, I mean, and, and, you know, what we need to actually ask, you know, how are the prisons actually um, dealing with this pandemic? How are they trying to make prisoners uh, feel safe or not? Right. I mean, in the, in mm-hmm. light of this, because for us, it's easy. I mean, if you're not in a prison, it's a little easier for us to be like, yeah, go and have, you know, maintain social distance, wear a mask, you know, clean your surfaces, like all of that stuff that we've been asked to do. But I can't imagine that's, nearly uh you know uh, it's not as easy to do when you're a prisoner in a in a you know in some uh prison somewhere i mean i i just can't imagine and so i mean i want to ask this i mean what were the uh, in the wave of these um, resistance movements these uh, you know whether they're uprisings or strikes or whatever they were i mean what have been the common concerns or demands that prisoners have made um during these uprisings or or whatever they may be you know acts of resistance mhm mhm uh, some common threads. That's that's a really good question. I mean, I think, and you, you're kind of touching on this just in that in your question. I think there is uh, a common thread. And again, we're talking about 119 events, so it's not every event because some events we basically know just the bare bare minimum. Mm-hmm. But there is a, this thing that's sort of like it, it's a life or death situation. I mean, and that's maybe um, obvious, like at this point to us, like looking at this. Be- but like that's not in fact what like at least like ideologically prisons are supposed to, to do. I mean they're supposed like they're not supposed to be death sentences. They're right. Like, like I mean in, in states that they're the death sentence is illegal, like Michigan, for instance, there's no death sentence in Michigan. You know, prisoners are dying preventable deaths. And so like they, I think prisoners everywhere, and again that includes ICE detainees and people in county jails and sure. pre like pre pre trial detention, you know so-called, uh, you know, innocent people, not accused of any crime, uh, in, uh, but also prisoners. And uh, they're, uh, they, they're talking about it as like they don't have, there's almost like no other option for them but to take action in some way because it's their lives are on the line. And yeah. and the politicians are not doing, if they're doing anything, it's not enough. And often they're not doing anything. Right. Um, and so, I mean, it, it manifests, I think, in lots of ways, but the sort of framing of it as like, life or death uh, we got we got it we're the we gotta like we're the only one we're the only ones that can act right now like we have to take action no one's coming to save us and um, it's manifested in different ways like for instance early on um, i don't have the facility offhand but basically um it was in the it was in the deep south i'm, I'm sorry to, i don't have it off right off hand but basically some prisoners did a sort of uh this sort of spectacular tragic protest where they like um made nooses and they were gonna like Hmm. hang themselves on facebook live oh wow uh and and they like they basically like if nothing's done like we're gonna do and they had like kind of this is in a prison okay and they like had like a yeah like like a facebook live thing going up and the setup and it's i mean it says there's a there's a video of it it's like it's unbelievable to to watch yeah i I, and uh so i mean this is like this is like that they're gonna they're, they're basically framing it as like they're gonna die anyway so at least like they're gonna do this like you know demonstration to uh to maybe save other people's lives or something and yeah um it's really insane and it also i think it also manifests in other ways of like uh there's a there was a bunch of escapes in this first period i mean honestly i think one of the things we found that i was personally most interested in was uh within like a uh, basically a 30 day period there was like 10 escapes i think that i think that's the right number i have to pull it up in one second but uh, this is so. This is another thing. I mean, and these are you know they're fugitives. They're not necessarily like, hey, we're escaping because of COVID, and we're gonna. But it's like, okay, where we're, oh, there's ten escapes in thirty days. Like people are like basically like f this and like you know t- taken off and like uh, you know because other, otherwise it's stay and die. You know, it's sure. 
Uh, so, and some of these people lasted uh, on the run for for months too, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that just the the demands that they're making in prisons is like, I mean, I think one of the things that was the theme was, um, seems like prisons are just really overpopulated, and, yeah. um. And so like one of the things, one of the solutions that's been posed, and I don't know if it's it's widespread at all, and I want to ask you this about, you know, just releasing people. Like if people have whatever kind of offenses or, or charges that they, uh, or, or things they've been convicted of, I should say, that, you know, maybe the courts or, or whoever deem as being like less severe or whatever, and they just release them. I mean, is that a, is that a common thing that prisons are doing in order to deal with, um, you know, the spread of the virus in these prisons or like what, what other ways are prisons at attempting to, I guess, deal with this issue? Uh, yes, there, there, I think basically everywhere there's been a push to release people. And I think like in the, like here and now, like today, like, I think that's the single best thing that, uh, these, like that, that can happen in these facilities to prevent the spread of the virus. Mm -hmm. Um, whether that's in state prisons or federal prisons or whatever. Um, yeah, like, like you touched on, I mean, there's, there's a lot of ways, um, that this reform could, could go and, uh, you know, releasing, uh, people that have, uh, you know, that are, that are elderly or that they're, they're sick or that, uh, you know, they, you know, there's different like variations of stuff called good time where like, if you don't get tickets for misconduct, you, you like get time off your sentence. Uh, somewhere like Michigan, that was repealed in something that's like kind of popularly known as the Truth and Sentencing Act. So now there's no good time in, in Michigan, just anecdotally where I live. So like so this stuff like that, the, the, the Truth and Sentencing Act really contributed to the situation. And that's from that's an act passed in the 90s mm. to the prison of Michigan. Are there's, there, there's eight people in a four man cell. So it's like twice as overcrowded. Mm. Um, there's no reward for good time. They're not. And. They basically did jack shit here in Michigan, and and mm. and I it, it'd be hard for me to say definitively everywhere, but I got the impression that there were like little token efforts made, like in Michigan, uh, you know, there was this thing like uh, they're gonna parole people, and mm. um, I just don't. It wasn't if it was if 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 like I think I said earlier, if if there was any action taken, it it de was not enough because honestly, just looking at it now it's december i mean it's like this stuff started in march right and it's it's in prisons in particular i mean i guess we just had another big wave in general but in prisons it's like it's never gotten better it's mm -hmm. like it's still it's it's since it hit prisons it's just been moving around between facilities and just like knocking people out and um yeah. so 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 what they i think what they have what they've tried to do is little kind of honestly silly stuff like try to give people masks but it's like you just can't socially distance in prison they try to like do th uh, temperature readings of guards but then uh, in michigan like some they stopped that uh, i don't know these wow. little tiny things that like just don't do basically anything and and uh i mean it's it's honestly quite quite sad and, and like tragic and like because there is this option that like there that to, to release people and, and that would go a long way and i think in that context that's what i was maybe kind of implying talking about the escapes which mm -hmm. yeah i found the number actually there was a uh, not there were nine escapes in a 27 day period so between march 23rd and april 19th mm -hmm. um there was a uh, 20 uh sorry nine escapes and so this is these are people i think this is a very like kind of common sense logic to the release prisoners thing and i think that's strong i think that's a good thing about it because it's a thing that can be like kind of demanded by like uh whatever kind of progressive democrats but also you know, abolitionists and like prisoners themselves. And like, you know, if the, if the government is not going to free them, then they're going to free themselves basically is, is what at least we saw in this early period. Mm -hmm.